Hey all, welcome to ShareTrack. This is Raj here. Friend, today I'm going to talk to you about CRISPR Therapeutics uh, Exacel. Uh, and um, maybe the next video will be about um, Lovo Cell. And in both cases, I'm going to take a deeper dive into the exact edits that are taking place, the exact mechanism by which uh, Exacel and Lovo Cell are trying to address sickle cell disease and uh, TDT so that uh, we can understand which one of them is superior and uh, what are the strengths and weaknesses of each of these therapies. Personally, I have shares of both CRISPR as well as uh, Bluebird, so I'm very much interested in finding out their relative merits. So today I'm going to start off with uh, Exacel, uh, so let's get started. <music> Welcome back, friends. Let us start by first understanding a bit of background information about sickle cell disease and uh, TDT so that we can appreciate the strategy adopted by CRISPR therapeutics in Exacel to treat these conditions. A child begins to produce fetal hemoglobin during the fetal development, specifically during the first trimester of pregnancy. Fetal hemoglobin is the predominant type of hemoglobin produced by the developing fetus and is responsible for carrying oxygen in the fetal bloodstream. HBF or fetal hemoglobin is well suited for its role because it has a higher affinity for oxygen than adult hemoglobin which is HbA allowing it to efficiently transport oxygen from mother's bloodstream to the developing fetus. So it's well suited and the body allows this to happen. After birth, in the weeks and months that follow, the production of fetal hemoglobin gradually decreases and the production of adult hemoglobin, that is HbA, begins to increase. This transition is a normal part of development and is influenced by various genetic and epigenetic factors. In most individuals, by the age of six months to one year, the production of fetal hemoglobin decreases significantly and the production of adult hemoglobin or HbA becomes the predominant form of hemoglobin in the bloodstream. However, some individuals continue to produce small amounts of HbF throughout their uh, adult lives and this is an entirely normal uh, phenomenon. Uh, Exacel is cutting edge uh, therapy that aims to help people with certain blood disorders like sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. Uh, these conditions have problems with the oxygen carrying protein in red blood cells or HbA which can lead to both health issues. Now uh, if uh, the adult um, uh, hemoglobin uh, that's being produced uh, is defective uh, then the person suffers from sickle cell disease and um, uh, TDT or TDT. And now let's look at CRISPR strategy. CRISPR therapeutic strategy is to suppress BCL11A so that fetal hemoglobin can be produced once again instead of defective adult hemoglobin. Here is how they accomplish the task. It's an autologous ex vivo process and uh, exacel starts by collecting a patient's uh, blood stem cells from their bone marrow. Remember, these are the cells responsible for making new blood cells in the body and at this stage, the blood stem cells have a BCL11A gene expressed and therefore it creates adult hemoglobin that is defective. So CRISPR therapeutics use CRISPR-Cas9 to edit these collected cells outside the patient's body this editing process is like fixing a spelling mistake in a book in order to suppress the BCL11A gene. The edit silences the BCL11A gene. We already know that BCL11A is the switch that normally turns off a gene responsible for making a special type of oxygen carrying uh, protein called fetal hemoglobin or HBF. The protein is usually active when we are babies but turns off after we are born. So we already covered that. So now that uh, the, uh, the edit has uh, silenced BCL11A, if these cells are put back into the body and they engraft, then all the blood cells produced there will be uh, fetal hemoglobin, will have fetal hemoglobin. So after the cells are edited and checked for quality and ready for transfusion, the patient first receives a treatment called bone marrow ablation. The primary purpose of bone marrow ablation is to uh, clear the patient's uh, bone marrow of uh, existing uh, or uh, defective blood forming cells. In the case of sickle cell disease and uh, TDT, the patient's bone marrow may contain a large number of dysfunctional blood stem cells that produce abnormal hemoglobin or lack essential components. Ablation is necessary to make space for the infusion of edited healthy stem cells uh, or genetic, genetically modified cells that can produce normal functional blood cells. 
Busulfan is a chemotherapy drug that is uh, commonly used for bone marrow ablation. It works by suppressing the activity of the bone marrow, uh, including the production of blood cells. This process is often referred to as conditioning. Busulfan conditioning is chosen because it has the ability to reduce the patient's own blood forming stem cells, which makes way for the incoming stem cells to engraft and start producing healthy blood cells. In my opinion, the, this is the biggest drawback for Exacel as the chemotherapy is used for this process. And we saw proof of that in CLIMB 121 clinical trial data, despite it being a resounding success. In the CLIMB 121 clinical trials, Victoria Gray, a mother of four, was the first patient to receive Exacel. Recently, on March 11, 2023, she gave an interview where she said that uh, nearly four years later, uh, after the uh, procedure, she's no longer in pain and has not been uh, admitted to hospital uh, that she used to have to go every few months. She is now holding on a full-time job and also able to take care of her children and is leading a normal life. So this is resounding success in my books and FDA also believes so. But not all 31 candidates of the phase uh, 2 slash 3 CLIMB 121 trial had a happy ever after in the sense that though their SCD was uh, taken care of, a third of the cohorts in the study had severe adverse uh, events related to their conditioning regimen, uh, which was busulfan. However, from the FDA perspective, the therapy has proven to be a resounding success. And if a more benign replacement uh, for busulfan was found, the patient experience would be even better. And I think from a practical perspective, if patients were screened and informed of this aspect of the treatment and uh, obtained uh, uh, and if they uh, give uh, informed consent uh, before treatment, uh, then that would uh, not be a big issue uh, as it may seem right now because the patient would have chosen and they would be mentally prepared to undergo uh, whatever uh, difficulties busulfan may cause. After the bone marrow is uh, cleared uh, to receive the edited stem cells, the edited stem cells, uh, which now have BCL11A switched, uh, switch turn off, uh, are put back into the patient's body. And these cells are like the body's natural factories that make more blood cells. With the BCL11A switch turned off, uh, these edited cells start producing more fetal hemoglobin or HBF. This is a good thing because higher levels of HBF can help counteract the problems caused by the genetic mutations in sickle cell disease and TDT. So in simple terms, Exacel is a therapy that uses genetic editing to make the patient's own blood stem cells produce more of a special protein, which is fetal hemoglobin, which can uh, help reduce the symptoms and problems caused by certain blood disorders like SCD and TDT. It's like uh, fixing a switch in the body's blood cell factory uh, to make healthier blood cells. This is an autologous process and needs the overheads of setting up uh, collection centers and there may be a, a built-in delay between uh, request for uh, the therapy and the provision of the edited cells. However, once the pro procedure is done, the patient has a lifetime of cure with the exception that uh, a third of the patients might have um, a little bit of problem because of busulfan, but their uh, blood condition will be definitely cured. Uh, I think uh, that seems to be uh, the sufficient depth to which I can go in uh, with respect to Exacel. Uh, and um, uh, I think that should suffice us as investors. So we now have an idea how uh, Exacel is able to handle both SCD and TDT. I'll next be providing similar deeper dive into lower cells so that you can understand uh, which of these two therapies uh, is superior. You can compare and contrast. You can look at the advantages and disadvantages. You can look at it from the point of view of marketing, distribution, from the point of view of the patient. And uh, that will give you an idea of the pricing power of each of these therapies. So that's what I'm aiming for. And um, as I said, personally, I have uh, CRISPR shares as well as uh, Bluebird shares. So I'm interested in looking at both of them. That said, thanks for watching uh, this video till the end. Bye for now.